In this video, I'm going to show you the best and easiest way to invest in the stock market for your kids. I will also discuss things like what to invest in, taxes, and all the other important things you should know before getting started. Let's get straight into it. Investing early for your child will give them a huge head start in life when they become an adult. There are a couple of ways you can invest for your child. The easiest but not necessarily the best way is to just invest under your name and then transfer the shares to your child when they turn 18. However, in doing that, you may have to pay capital gains tax. So it's probably not the best way to do it. In my opinion, the best way to invest in the stock market for your kids is to sign up for an online brokerage account. However, instead of putting the account under your child's name, you open what is called a minor account under your own name and act as the trustee to your child. So this basically means your child is the minor who will be the beneficiary of the account when they reach adult age, which is 18. So this way you can still invest for them on their behalf while knowing that the shares can be transferred to their own account when they turn 18, with the added bonus that you won't have to pay capital gains tax. So now you're probably wondering what brokers can I use to create a minor trust account. From my research, the two most popular online brokers that offer minor accounts are Comsec and Selfwealth. And it's very easy to apply for a minor trust account for either one. With Comsec, if you are a new customer, then follow the steps on the screen here. All the links will be in the description. And if you already have a Comsec account, then just go into your portfolio, click Offers Apply, then select Applications. And from there, you should be able to apply for a trust account. So you can act as your child's trustee until they turn 18 years old, at which time you can transfer the shares into their name. So similarly, to sign up for a trust account on Self-Wealth, just follow the instructions on this screen. With Self-Wealth, you will already need to be a customer before creating one for your child. But it's very easy to apply, just follow the steps. By the way, if you want to know more about how to use Comsec or Self-Wealth, I'll link some videos that I've made in the past down below. Alright, so let's talk about taxes. According to the ATO website, if you are under 18 years old, your income will be taxed as follows. Your child will pay 0% tax for up to $416 per year. Then they will pay 66% for any income between $417 and $1,307. And 45% for any amount over $1,307 that is not accepted income. By the way, dividends and capital gains count as non-expected income and therefore are subject to these tax rates. When you buy shares on behalf of your child, you have a choice to provide a tax file number. If you don't provide one, then the tax will be withheld at the rate of 47% for any unfranked dividend paid out from the shares. There is no age limit to apply for a tax file number, so I would recommend applying one for your child. If your child owns shares and earns more than $416, you must lodge a tax return on their behalf. Even if your child earns $416 or less, you may still consider lodging a tax return if you believe too much pay-as-you-go tax was withheld or to claim refund for franking credit. So at this stage, you may be a little bit confused on whose tax return should the dividends be declared on or whose tax file number to use in what situation. Well, to clear this up, let's look at a few case examples on the ATO website. So example one, declaring dividends under $416 on parent's tax return. Peter withdraws $3,000 from his own bank account to buy shares in the name of his daughter, Georgia. Peter quotes his tax file number when he buys the shares. He deposits the dividends of $200 into his own bank account and uses it for his own personal expenses. Peter declares the $200 on his tax return. When he sells the shares, he will also declare any capital gain or loss. Okay, so in this case, the father used his own tax file number when he bought the shares. And since he deposits the dividend into his own bank account and uses it for his own personal expense, he declared it on his tax return and not his daughter's. Example two, declaring dividends on child's tax return. Simon withdraws $5,000 from his bank account to buy shares in the name of his son, Jordan. He quotes Jordan's tax file number when he buys the shares. Simon makes all the decisions about those shares as Jordan is only three years old. All dividend income and any profit from the sale of those shares are deposited into a bank account in Jordan's name with Simon as trustee. The dividends and capital gains are declared on Jordan's tax return. Okay, so this example is more relatable to what we are trying to do. Simon, the father, has set up a minor account with his son's name and put himself as the trustee. He used his son's tax file number when buying the shares. Therefore, all dividends and capital gains goes into his son's bank account and they declare any dividends or capital gains under the son's tax return. So hopefully this clears up whose tax return and tax file number you should be using. Now speaking of capital gains, how does that apply to you and your child? Well, the main advantage of opening a minor trust account is when your child turns 18, the shares can be transferred directly into their name without having to pay capital gains tax. If you simply bought the shares under your own name and plan to gift them to your child when they turn 18, then you will have to pay any capital gains tax. If you have a minor trust account, the ATO will not count this as a capital gains tax event since your child was always the beneficiary to the shares from the start. Let's look at another case example provided by the ATO website. Example three, declaring dividends on child's tax return. Sarah buys shares for her child Michael with money given to him for his birthday. Sarah holds the shares for the benefit of Michael with a share broker until he turns 18. No formal trust deed has been created. Sarah quotes Michael's tax file number when she buys the shares. All dividends have been reinvested through a dividend reinvestment plan. The dividends are declared on Michael's tax returns. When Michael turns 18 years old, the shares will be transferred to him through an off-market transfer. As he remains the beneficial owner of the shares, there will be no capital gain or loss for either Sarah or Michael on the transfer. So there you go, you won't have to worry about capital gains in this instance. That is assuming you won't sell any of the shares before your child turns 18. So how much money can you potentially make over years of investing? 
Now that is a fun question that you or your child may wonder. Thanks to the power of compound interest, the more time you give your money to grow, the more it'll grow exponentially. And when I say time, I don't mean a few years, I'm talking about a few decades. And luckily for your child, time is the one thing they have in abundance. To show you what I mean, let's have a look at this case example from the Vanguard website. This chart is showing two parents who invested for their child at different times in the last 20 years. Both child was born in 2002. The graph is assuming an average yearly return of 8.2%, which is the average annual return of the Australian stock market in the last 20 years. The first parent in green started the investment at the time of birth in 2002. They started with $500 and continued to invest $250 per month for the next 20 years. So that is $3,000 per year for 20 years, meaning they invested $60,000 in total. 20 years later, in 2022, the total investment had grown to about $140,000. So that is a profit before tax of about $80,000. The second parent in brown waited until their child was 10 and started investing in 2012. Like the first parent, they also started with $500 and continued to invest $250 per month for the next 10 years. So that is $3,000 per year for 10 years, meaning they invested $30,000 in total. 10 years later, in 2022, the total investment had grown to about $46,000. So that is a profit before tax of about $16,000. So if you compare the two, even though the first parent invested $30,000 more, they still walked away with $34,000 more profit. And this graph is the perfect illustration of the power of compound interest. It's only in the later years that the compounding effect goes crazy. If you're curious to see your own child's potential return, then let's have a look at this compound interest calculator from the Money Smart website. Let's say you started with a $500 initial amount, which is the minimum amount you must buy when investing into a new stock for the first time, if you're using a chess sponsored broker like Comsec or Self Wealth. Then let's say you wanna invest $100 per month. Let's keep the interest rate at a modest 8% per year, which is around the average annual return in the last 30 years for both the Australian and US market. Let's keep the number of years at 10 years. So you can see on the bottom here, your breakdown. You have your initial deposit, total regular deposits, and total interest, which is basically the profit you're making on the investment. Let's try changing it to 20 years. And as you can see, the total interest has increased significantly. Let's now try 30 years. So again, another significant increase in total interest. That is the power of compound interest doing its thing. So feel free to play around with the numbers to a budget that suits you. So let's say you can afford the $250 per month like the Vanguard example. If you did that for 30 years, you could have a profit of $287,000. Even if you only held it for 18 years, so say from the time your child is born until they turn 18, you would have about $67,000 in profit and a total portfolio of $122,000. Now that will be an amazing 18th birthday present to give to your child. Although it is fun to look at these scenarios, please note that we are looking at past performances to get these expected returns. And there is a saying in the investing world that past performances does not guarantee future results. However, it is the only indicator that we have. And historically speaking, both the Australian and US stock market has always gone up when given enough time. That is a fact, take from that what you will. And just a quick disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. My comments today are for entertainment purposes only. The information in this video should be for educational purposes only to do your own research. Please go and see a professional if you would like financial advice. Having said all that, let's move on. So what should you invest in for your child? The good news is your child has a lot of time ahead of them. And as we just discussed, time is one of the most valuable ingredient when it comes to investing in the stock market. Also, we should remember from the tax table that your child will pay 0% tax on the first $416 earned and a much higher rate for anything after. Therefore, it may be logical to avoid investing in high dividend stocks to avoid paying more tax. So with all these things in mind, it may be better to look at high growth companies or ETFs that pay minimal or no dividends. This will help minimize the impact of dividend tax while providing unlimited potential growth in share price. Please note, if you sell these shares, you will have to pay capital gains, which will essentially count as income. However, the idea is to hold these shares long-term for your child and not to sell them. The aim should be for you to buy quality companies that you and your child will be happy to hold for years. If you are not experienced in investing, then ETFs are probably the best place to start for your child. An ETF is basically a basket that contains many stocks inside, which provides instant diversification. By investing into a single ETF, you are essentially buying many companies all at the price of one single stock. So for example, instead of buying different shares in BHP, Commonwealth Bank, and Woolworth, you can buy an ETF that already includes those three companies plus many more. And if you want to further diversify outside of Australia, you can look at international ETFs. For example, perhaps an ETF that tracks the S&P 500, which contains the top 500 largest companies from the United States. So well-known companies like Apple, Amazon, and Google, you can invest in all of them with a single ETF. You could also look at emerging markets like Asia. These are more risky, but will have a potential higher upside. There are ETFs that track the top Asian companies like Alibaba, Samsung, and Tencent. So it could be a fun project for you and your child to research these companies and let them have a say in what they want to invest in. 
Just remember, you also want your kids to grow up having an investing mindset. This will give them such a huge head start in life and they will thank you for it. And if you're still unsure where to start, I'll leave a link down below on a video where I explain how the Australian stock market works. I think that's a good starting point for most people, so go check it out. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, then comment the word bubble down below so I know you made it this far. And if you're new around here, what are you waiting for my friend? Subscribe to my channel and join the community. I plan to make many more videos like this in the future and you don't want to miss them. And if you'd like to learn more about what to invest in, check out this video on screen where I go over some of Australia's most popular ETFs. And as always, thank you for watching. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next video.